<laughs> okay, um, so uh, here's what we know from the question. So <clears throat> there are uh, ions with an average speed of what? The, they have an average speed is equals to uh, 3.2 exponent four meter per second. And uh, the initial mass is 5.2 exponent three kilograms, okay? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> calculate the mass of one xenon ion. So the molar mass is this. Okay, um, so here's the thing. So uh, it's a, a pretty straightforward question, a unitary method question for the part one. So they're saying that the one mole is equals to 0 0.131 kilograms, okay? One mole is what? One mole is 6.02 exponent 23 uh, atoms of xenon are 0 0.131 kilograms. So they're asking you about how much will the one atom, what's the mass of one atom? That's basically the molar mass. So the mass of one xenon ion. So they are equals to 0 0.131 divided by 6.02 into 10 raised to the power 23. Let me use my calculator. <clears throat> so 0 0.131 divided by 6.02. Do you get this thing? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is the mass of one, <clears throat> one uh, xenon ion. Okay, in part two, they're saying that uh, <clears throat> uh, the engine is designed to eject 9.5 exponent 18 ions per second. Determine the initial acceleration, okay? So, um, okay, we have to find the initial acceleration. Now, um, we need to find out that uh, the engine is, how much the initial acceleration is gonna be, okay? Yeah. So this can be, uh, this will be uh, like, uh, here we have to find the, find what? Find the initial speed that the aircraft has, okay? Mm -hmm. So, we have to find the, now uh, consider it like this. So this is a spacecraft. Okay. Every second, the number of ions that they are ejecting, let's say this ball sort of represents the ions that the spacecraft eject in one second. So what this is, this is 9.5 exponent 18 xenon ions, okay? This dot represents 9.5 into 10 is power 18 meter per second. And uh, both of them are at, actually at rest, okay? This is the spacecraft, the weight is 5.2 exponent three kilograms, okay? Yeah. So if the, every second this mass is ejected by 
the uh, spacecraft. So they sort of separate. They, these ions have a mean speed of what? They have a mean speed of 3.2 exponent 4 meter per second. And their mass is 9.5 and 2 10 to the power 18 times the answer we part found in part one. Okay. Okay. Is it is it understandable? Like these 9.5 into 10 to the power 18 was the number of ions that there were. And uh, we in part A part one, we found out how much does one ion weigh. So that's the total mass of the this dot that we've made. Okay. Uh, yeah. So <clears throat> now they, this this to balance the momentum, this spacecraft would also have a speed b. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So mm -hmm. this was the initial. And this is the final okay so the initial mm -hmm. momentum was initial momentum was what initial momentum was zero because they both were at rest basically mm -hmm. uh, is that good um, yeah, um, why do you get why initial was uh, equal initial momentum equals to zero because both of them didn't have a speed like both of them were at rest. Um, but it doesn't say anywhere that they were at rest. No, so the initial, the thing is that initial means that the moment is starting, the, the it's starting the sort of the movement is starting, the motion of the spacecraft is getting started. Now, if that motion of that aircraft is getting started, that means that before that motion started, the both the, spacecraft was actually at rest. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what's the final momentum? Final momentum is equals to the mass, the uh, mass of uh, mass of ions times the speed of times the uh, <clears throat> velocity of ions plus the mass of spacecraft times the velocity of spacecraft. Is that clear? Okay, yeah. And the mass, let me just uh, quickly calculate the mass of the ions, so 9.5 exponent 18 times the answer we found in part one. So this comes out to be 2.0607 actually, exponent minus six, times V, which is what? It is equals to 3.2 exponent four. That is the mean speed of these ions. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Plus the mass of the spacecraft, which was equals to 5.2 exponent three times the velocity, which is equals to minus V, because it's in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. So this was the final momentum. Okay. Yeah. And the law of momentum says that the initial momentum should be equals to the final momentum. So zero is equals to, let me solve this as well, 0.2 exponent four. So 0 0.066 plus 5.2, sorry, um, minus 5.2 exponent three times V, okay? So how much V is equals to? Um, wait, where does the 0 0.066 come from? It's this, you multiply these two, you have this. Uh, okay. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. so this is equals to 0 0.066 divided by 5.2 exponent 3. So V is equals to 1.27 exponent minus 5 meter per second. Okay, but this is the velocity. Yeah. What, what do we need to find? Um, initial acceleration. Initial acceleration, Shabash. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is basically the, when we read the question, it said that the engine is designed to eject 9.5 exponent 18 xenon ions per second. So every second we're going to add this much velocity to the speed of uh, the spacecraft. Mm -hmm. So what does this mean? This means that every, let, let me write this down, every second the speed of the spacecraft will be increased by V. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if we are adding this per second, then we are actually saying that the, the initial acceleration will be equals to 1.27 into 10 raised to power minus five meter per second square. Because why? Because this is the exact amount of speed we're adding per second. So every second, every one second, the velocity, the speed of the spacecraft is increased by V. So that means practically that that's how much the acceleration can, it should be. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So this is the answer for part A. Part three says that you have to state in words the law you have used to solve a part two. So state in words, so we'll just write the total momentum of a system is conserved during the motion. Am I clear? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, a small rocket is used to detach a mass of time. The determine the change in the velocity of the satellite Mm -hmm. Wait, let me uh, just confirm one thing. I have to confirm. Okay. okay. Is it the complete question that you've sent me? Because this kind of uh, the working that I um, have in mind for this is not. Oh, have you got the um, I part of the question? 
Um, no. Okay, I think that's the second bit. Should I move on? Or are, are you sending um, it? I'm sending it. Okay. No, no, I got this part actually. I was talking about like some other part. So determine the change in velocity of the satellite as a result of the force F applied to the field rate. Uh, okay, um, so uh, do you know that uh, the uh, velocity is actually a uh, total force. Divided by mass multiplied by time. So the change in velocity. Do you know how this comes from? How, how does this come from? How we are discussing? Uh is it from momentum? Oh, no, it actually comes from F is equals to mass times acceleration. So F is equals to mass times change in velocity over time. So change in velocity is equals to F times T divided by M. Now, uh, uh, the correct way would be to find the area under this curve, under the graph, mm -hmm. and divided by mass. But I'm not sure if I'm allowed to, you know, do an approximation of the shape of the graph. But uh, give me, uh, uh, give me some time with this. I'm just gonna send you the solution probably by tomorrow because this is something I'll have to look up. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So really sorry for this, but I have to actually have to confirm this before telling it to you. So we will discuss this question probably in the next class, but uh, this class, uh, we I'm just going to tell you that this is the change in velocity formula. And uh, using this, we find that the area under the graph of not just the graph, sorry, the force time graph. Okay. Okay. So you just uh, we just let me check if that's the correct way to put it. Okay, moving on to the next question. Uh, a snooker, snooker ball is at rest on a smooth horizontal table. It hits by a snooker cue. Uh, simplified. Describe how the velocity varies from zero point six to zero point nine. Okay. So. The uh, since this V is actually F, the change in force times T divided by M, since uh, this is constant and time and obviously M are not dependent on the velocity. So we'll just say since everything is, since change in force, is zero. Hence, a better way to write it will be hence acceleration is also zero. Therefore, the velocity is constant. Okay. Okay, so no acceleration means constant velocity. Yeah. Wait, so um, acceleration is 
zero because that is all the force. So F is equals to M times acceleration. So if uh, this is zero, then mm -hmm. this is also zero. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you, uh, are you able to, do you get this thing? Um, yeah. Uh, like I can repeat if you want. It's because how is the the math? Um, hmm? Oh, actually, no, actually, no, 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 it's fine. So, <clears throat> zero acceleration uh, sort of implies that there is no change in velocity. So, no change mm -hmm. in velocity basically means that it's constant. We're not telling it's zero or not. It might be zero, but all mm -hmm. we know is that this velocity is constant. Yeah. Okay, um, so it's part C of some question, I don't know. Um, a pretty straightforward question. So it's saying that uh, there's a car, we'll call car, a, I'm sorry, it's a car. No, I'm not it mm. No, it's a car. So um, it has a mass of 850 kilograms and it is traveling 7.5 towards another car, which is actually stationary. So this has mass of B, I'm writing this as and this is mass of A. So mass of B is 1200 kilograms. Immediately after the impact, both cars move off together. So move off together, what does it mean? This means that now they, since they made a collision, this is car A and this is car B moving together so this is a this is b moving in this direction we call this v okay yeah so this is the initial picture initial means before collision and the, this is final so we're just going to use the total momentum initial we're just going to find the initial momentum first so initial momentum is basically a mass of A times velocity of A plus mass of B times velocity of B. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna write it stationary. So that you know it's zero. So mass of A is 850 times velocity, which is 7.5 all in 1200 times velocity of B, which is what? Zero, okay? Mm. Well, is, it, is it clear? Yeah. Now the final momentum is equals to mass of A plus mass of B times the, their V velocity V. Do you know why is that? Um, why? Because they basically are going off together. So they both, it's uh, it's basically us saying that both the, both the cars actually have the same speed. So if I were to write MA times V plus MB times V, because they both are the, V is the speed of both A and B. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So this would have become MA plus MB times V. Okay, yeah. The, uh, is it clear? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, just uh, equate the initial momentum is equals to the final momentum 
and uh, so 850 times 7.5 so this is 6375 is plus zero is equals to 1200 sorry not 1200 uh, 850 plus 1200 times v okay mm -hmm. so v is basically 6375 divided by 2050 V is equals to 3.0. This is the speed. Yeah. Um, were you not getting the same answer? Because I think you've done the same working. No idea. I think I was talking out first and then I, I did it again. Okay, um, so <laughs> the uh, next uh, part that we have, I think it starts can you confirm if this is the next question that you want me to do? Because that's how it's starting in. So is that the point that this, uh, the next question starts? Wait, how does it start? Um, I mean, that's the first part of the question. So I've replied to that picture where I think it starts. Uh, okay. yeah okay so it's uh, again the same question so there is the block a which is moving towards 3.0 and there is a block b which is moving towards this with 2.0 meter per second meter per second their masses are given 2.4 kilograms and 1.2 kilogram. So this is the initial and uh, this is A and this is B and they're moving with a speed V. This is the final. So initial momentum is equal to Uh, M A times V A times velocity of A plus mass of B times velocity of B, which is equals to two point two point four times three point zero plus one point two times minus two point zero. Okay, you get it. Why this is minus? Because it's in the opposite direction. Chabash. So final momentum is basically a mass of A plus mass of B times B. Okay? Yeah. So now what we're going to do, we are going to equate the initial momentum yeah. with the final momentum which is equal to 2.4 times 3 minus 1.2 times 2. This is equals to 4.8 is equals to 1 point, oh, sorry, um, 2.4 plus 1.2 times V. V is equals to 4.8 divided by 3.6. V is equals to four over three, which is meter per second. Okay. So this can be equals to V is equals to 1.333 meter per second. Do you get this? Um, what is it? Um, uh... 
Do you get why how this 4.8 is coming? No. Uh, uh, so, so if you solve this thing, if you uh, solve this part of the initial momentum, so you'll get 4.8. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, 2.4 is the mass of A. So <clears throat> just equate the initial momentum and final momentum. Okay. Yeah. So that's it. Let me just copy this whole thing and paste it here for the next part which says that we have to show that this collision is inelastic. V, so I'm just writing V to be equals to 1.3 meter per second. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> sorry. So uh, what was to just a good technique is to show the kinetic energy of initial system and kinetic energy of uh, final so <clears throat> initially the kinetic energy was half m a v a squared plus half m a sorry m b v b squared squared so just plug in the values 1 upon 2 2.4 times uh, 3 squared plus 3 squared plus 1 over 2 1.2 and 2 squared, okay? Mm -hmm. 0.5 times 2.4 times 3 squared plus 0 0.5, 0 0.2 times 4 is equals to, this is equals to 13.2 joules. And the final kinetic energy is basically uh, MA plus MB V squared. Okay. Okay. So mm. this is 2.4 plus 1.2 times 1.33 whole squared. So this is equals to 3.18 joules. So <clears throat> what you're gonna write is since initial kinetic energy of the system is not equal to final kinetic energy of the system. Hence, the collision is inelastic. Is it clear? Yeah. Do I need to repeat anything or something? Because that's the end of the questions you sent me. Um, no. Do you want to, uh, do you have any other questions like from today's class or something? No, I don't think so. No. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, I think uh, that uh, concludes today. Uh, today's discussion. Tomorrow, maybe uh, we can like I'll just send you a voice note or something uh, over the WhatsApp or I'll just email you a solution or we may uh, like also discuss the solution in uh, our next class of this. So just out of like, uh, just to like for my own, uh, do you have like any test before uh, next week or do you have any test this week? So do you uh, have yeah, I have a test on mechanics on 
on Friday. So um, like what I can do is like prepare your test for you. So that test will have like questions uh, from different past papers or maybe from the book even. So just like you can like uh, do those questions and we can discuss the, those questions after we're done. Okay, yeah. Okay. okay, so when is this test? Uh, Friday, this Friday. Okay, this Friday. So uh, is Wednesday a good time or even Thursday to take a class, like another class? Yeah. Okay, Um. so I will keep a class on uh, Thursday, inshallah, mm -hmm. and uh, we will we'll discuss mechanics. I'll just prepare like a test for you. Okay. Um, my my exam board is a uh, OCR gateway. Oh uh, yeah, 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 OCR. So uh, it's it's basically like probably similar questions. So I'll just make it uh, some the only take questions that are yeah that like aren't part of our own syllabus. So they won't mm -hmm. be too much too difficult like for you or something, but it will be on your syllabus and you will you will be able to answer them, inshallah. Okay. 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 Yeah. So I think this ends today's discussion. And uh, if you don't have any questions, I guess I'm gonna start I'm gonna uh, end the meeting.